Hi, I'm Jonathan Metter, and we're here in Pico America's Service Department, and today we're going to show you how easy it is to install analog sound into a Pico starter set saddle tank loco. Uh, Christmas trains are popular, so we're going to use one of these out of a Christmas starter set as our example. The first step in disassembling any loco, whether you're installing a sound unit or a smoke unit or trying to do some maintenance on the motor, is to test it and make sure you know what you're working with. So we're just going to give it a quick test, make sure it's running okay, and it looks like it is. So everything's good to go and we can tear into the loco. Okay, we'll need a few tools. Uh, your handy dandy Pico screwdriver set will work for most of the process. Our larger Phillips screwdriver will, will work on most of the screws on your Pico Loco. And the first step will be a couple of screws underneath the cab, underneath the uh, engineer's step, the ladder there, and one here at the front of the cab. And then a couple of screws that hold the uh, cow catcher on if your Loco has a cow catcher or the pilot beam. Uh, and we'll remove those and get underway. And if you're installing a sound unit, one further part to remove would be a little reed switch cover plate uh, with these two screws here under the front of the loco. And there's the last screw. And one good point is uh, we like to work on a loco on a nice soft towel so that we don't uh, scuff up anything on the loco. And then we're good to go. And it's a good idea just so that you don't end up with uh, extra screws when you're putting things back together. To Keep your screws and parts nicely arranged, uh, kind of in the order that they were on the loco originally, uh, with the parts that, that they secured so that you know what you're working with. And we're coming down to the one screw that uh, everybody tends to overlook, and it's right here between the cylinders, and we'll loosen that screw, and that's going to allow us to remove the whole boiler from the loco. All right, we removed a bunch of screws from the bottom. Now we're ready to remove the cab. So we lift the back end of the cab up and just kind of get that uh, part up and over. The little flag post pulling backwards gently and then it slide it straight back. Don't go too far. You do have some uh, a figure in there and you do have some wires uh, to the rear light. So uh, that's removed for now. And now we're going to go to two more screws which are located right here on the cab floor that hold the back end of the boiler, the firebox, down to the cab floor and we'll remove those two screws and then we're all, almost ready to remove the boiler. Alright, we're going to pull the uh, boiler front, the smoke box front, off and pull the headlight out there. This is just going to give us a little bit more uh, leverage and a good grip on the boiler and the little steam pipes kind of snap into the lower part of the, the boiler front or smoke box uh, and you'll think you're going to break something but we're going to lift up on the rear of the boiler and kind of gently jockey it back a little bit and unsnap that little tab there uh, from its place in the chassis and the boiler will lift off and pretty clean. Okay, for analog sound in an American style loco, we're going to install a 36221 uh, steam sound kit. And that kit is a very, very nice little kit that comes complete with a high quality speaker and an enclosure. Uh, the main circuit board, a circuit board with the uh, smoke box front and the uh, switch for the smoke and the volume control for the sound. Uh, comes with some hardware, comes with the reed switch to trigger the bells and whistles via the track magnets. So it's pretty much everything, all the parts that you'll need for the installation. As our first step in the actual installation, we'll go ahead and install the reed switch assembly that's going to be used to trigger the uh, bell and whistle with the track magnets when you're running on DC. And we feed the wires through the little opening here in the front of the chassis, just in front of the cylinders, and pull that through a little bit. Uh, here's the holder for the reed switch, and it's got a little pin so you can properly locate the circuit board. And that fits in place. And I pull the wires down a bit so it's neat and tidy. And then we put the cover on. And secure that with the two screws that we very carefully uh, set aside in the right place. Okay, first step back on top of the gearbox. We're going to peel up the tape here that secures the wiring harness and then we can access the wiring harness here and we're going to pull up the wires that plug into the top of the gearbox 
there. Uh, and we'll notice on there that there are some labels molded into the top of the gearbox housing. And those are M1 and M2 for motor 1 and, M and motor 2, and S1 and S2 for uh, rail 1 or side 1 and side 2. Our main circuit board needs to mount in a loco with this little long terminal block and the wires facing towards the rear. And you may find on some versions of the loco, uh, this circuit board or this circuit board holder here uh, has been mounted with these screw posts all towards the right side of the loco. Uh, I've loosened the screws here. This needs to be turned around uh, so that those screw posts are towards the left and then the four screw holes line up with the circuit board. So that's just a little extra step, real, real simple. And then everything will be in the proper place. All right, we've secured our uh, main circuit board with the four small screws from the uh, little parts bag that's in the kit. Uh, those screws are there, so it's, it's in place. Uh, be careful not to over tighten those. You don't want to uh, crack the circuit board. Now we're going to uh, just be careful of the, how the wires are routed so that we have the the uh, wires going to the uh, little piece that's going to go in the front of the loco, uh, free of the, the wires that are going down to the motor here. And we're just going to follow our diagram there that's in uh, both German and English, uh, listing the S1 and S2 uh, connections and the M1 and M2 connections. So that would be these four wires, the white and red and blue and gray. And we'll plug those into place. And Make sure those are secure. We've plugged in the track and motor wires and we're going to press down on those after we've got them firmly pushed down uh, onto the post. Now we're going to bend those wires over a little bit uh, towards the front of the loco. This is just to get them out of the way of the, uh, the speaker cone uh, so we have no, no interference there. And while we're here uh, at this point we can certainly uh, unplug this wiring harness that's going to the uh, yellow and black wires for our front and rear lights and you can just set that aside that part is no longer needed those wiring harnesses those are good little pins uh, which are handy for use with your pico ball bearing wheels or other uh, wiring other pico items so good to save uh, keep them in the in the toolbox and while we're inside the loco we're going to add a feature just about everybody wants which is smoke and the Pico 36142 5 volt smoke unit and the 36143 5 volt voltage regulator are a great combo and that will give you uh, fantastic working smoke even when the loco is moving at slow speeds. All right, now we're going to follow our wiring diagram and continue to make connections. Uh, we have the front and rear headlights that will connect. Uh, the black goes into the black socket. And the yellow goes into the yellow. And the same circuit board is used for our uh, German style locos which have dual lights. So it's a little different. We don't use all of these little uh, sockets. You'll notice there are pairs of them. Uh, we just want to use one out of each pair of uh, the black or yellow. Um, that's fine. Uh, you'll have extra wires but there's no harm in that. As you're plugging in the rear light on your loco you may find that your loco has a black and yellow uh, wire while the circuit board has a black and brown wire. Uh, just connect the black to black and the yellow to the brown and it should work just fine. Uh, so the rear light will light only when the loco is going in reverse and the front will light in, in forwards. And at this point we can mount the speaker and the enclosure. We're going to route the wires uh, through here onto the right side and we'll set this down in place. Uh, quarters are a little bit tight here so just take your time and be careful. Uh, you see why we bent the wires out of the way for the um, power connections on the on the top of the gearbox. Uh, and there are two little mounting posts, uh, one on either side, kind of caddy corner on, on either side of the speaker enclosure. And because the uh, high quality speaker we provide has a very strong magnet, this is one instance where you may find it handy to use a pair of needle nose pliers to hold that screw in place uh, until you can get it secured with the screwdriver. The magnet will definitely attract the screws and your tools. 
And the speaker cable plugs in here at the front of the circuit board. It's keyed so it goes in the correct way and only that way. At this point, before we fasten things back together, it's a good idea to test to make sure we've done everything correctly. So we're going to put the tra train on the track, even with some wires kind of hanging here, and we're going to give a little power to it. Alright, seems to be working okay. We can proceed. Okay, we're going to connect the reed switch assembly wires to the circuit board. Those are, of course, on the diagram. Uh, you may have a wire uh, harness that is red, blue, and yellow. Uh, the diagram talks about red, blue, and green. Uh, the red and blue are pretty self-evident, and that only leaves you with one wire to hook up, which is the, uh, the green or yellow wire, whichever one you have. And then you're good to go. On the wiring harness that's provided uh, with the little smoke and volume control circuit board. You'll find a black and a green wire and each one uh, as it comes in the kit has a little uh, piece of shrink tube on there. We're going to pull those pieces of shrink tube off and we're going to take our little voltage regulator circuit board uh, 36143 and we're going to put those into the terminal, uh, the half of the terminal block that's green. That's the input. Uh, we'll hook those two wires in and use our small Pico screwdriver to secure those wires in place. Okay. And we're going to feed the smoke unit wires down through the smokestack and through the open part of the boiler and just settle the, uh, the smoke unit inside the stack there. Press it into place and then we're going to connect the brown and white wires into the gray terminal uh, part of the terminal strip and doesn't matter the polarity of these wires, uh, the black and the green wires can be uh, reversed as long as they both go into the green part of the terminal strip and the brown and the white wires can be reversed just as long as they go into the, the gray part of the terminal strip. Okay, we've got all those connections made. And your little voltage regulator circuit board has a clear plastic wrap on it. That's not a wrapper for you to remove, that needs to stay on there. We're going to put our little piece of double stick tape that's in the kit on the back of that and we're going to apply that to the back of this little circuit board on the black plastic holder so it's conveniently located and everything is neatly secured and then this is going to go inside the front of the boiler in the loco. Alright, we're ready to put the boiler back in place. We're going to be very careful and make sure uh, all the wires are neatly tucked up inside and nothing's getting pinched in between parts as we put it back together. We've got our uh, headlight LED running uh, along the side of the little uh, plastic plate there in the boiler. We've got our smoke unit in place and set our boiler down in place and snap it back into position. All right, we've got the boiler secured back in place and we've been very careful to make sure the wires are all in there and nothing is pinched. Uh, we've snapped in a 35268 track magnet into our track to activate the bell and whistle. You just turn those around to, to do one or the other. And we're going to put in a little Pico 36210 smoke fluid. That's the safe fluid for your smoke unit. Uh, there are some other brands that are, that are not so safe. Uh, we're just going to put our cab here in place temporarily and we're going to give a little power and give it a try. Got smoke working. And the sound is all working. We're good to go. So we can proceed with putting everything back together.